On both sides, the army and police on one, the insurgents on the other, only 150 to 200 people were killed. But it's claimed there were thousands. An attack on Muammar Gaddafi is an attack on Libya itself. It is treason. There is no uprising in the east, only a criminal enterprise by a few hundred gangsters. They are mystified that the United Nations cannot see that. There's a constant refrain in this crowd. The people are happy, but Al Jazeera knows nothing. So is the unbalanced nature of the coverage. Rather than being impartial observers, some networks stop short of directing the protesters. But here, the Al Jazeera crew is warming up the crowd in time for their next live report. You are hearing rumors, false reports. Please take your camera tomorrow morning, even this night. Go, uh, go to uh, every city in Libya. Everything is calm. Everything is peaceful. The point is there is a big, big gap between reality and the media report. David Cameron has been accused by uh, some people within the government of trying to orchestrate regime change across the Arab world. Is this something that you agree with? Of course. With, uh, with France? Of course. It's very obvious. It's very obvious. You know, we told them, the British and the, 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 the French, we, we did challenge them. We told them, send fact-finding mission to Libya. Footage we see on American and British channels looks fake. They create an illusion of military action. Where are the aircraft? Where are the bomb raids? Where is the destruction and casualties we hear so much about? If all that is true, evidence should now be on the table of the Security Council. Are there any conditions under which you would support foreign military intervention in Libya? Facts, that's all. Only facts on the table of the UN Security Council saying that weapons were used against peaceful civilians in Libya. The thing is, we don't have any facts. We have reports from the BBC, CNN and other media featuring some machine gunner firing his machine gun in the air. At the same time, we don't see any aircraft attacking. Instead, we see people applauding the gunner for looking so cool. If there were a real aircraft attack in progress, they wouldn't be applauding. The U.S. has reportedly asked Saudi Arabia if it can supply weapons to the rebels in Benghazi. The Saudis have been told that opponents of Gaddafi need anti-tank uh, rockets, mortars and ground-to-air missiles to shoot down Gaddafi's fighter bombers. We say we're concerned about things happening in Libya. Please note the following. The North African cell of Al-Qaeda is also concerned about what's happening in Libya. Do you think that's a coincidence? I mean, Americans themselves have estimated that Libya, especially the eastern part of the country, which is where the rebels have reportedly gained control, is where is is home to a large number of jihadists. They make up a fifth of world jihadists. It's enough to say that one of the rebel leaders in northeast Benghazi was once Osama bin Laden's personal driver. The question here is whether the U.S. is going to end up putting weapons in the hands of radicals and destabilizing the region even more. Well, the reports of Libya mobilizing its air force against its own people spread quickly around the world. But Russia's military chief says they've been monitoring from space. And the pictures tell a different story. According to Al Jazeera and to BBC, on the 22nd of February, uh, Libyan government has inflicted airstrikes on Benghazi, the biggest city in the country, and on Tripoli. And according to Russia's military, they have not registered any of those airstrikes. According to them, the pictures show that nothing of that sort has been going on the ground. Now, the tough new sanctions and Gaddafi's increasing isolation are based on allegations that he has ordered airstrikes, bombing of civilian protesters. We have seen no evidence of that yet, and the Gaddafi's strongly deny it. You must remember, dear people of America, that whenever government wants you to think and act in a certain way that would bring justification to an action that they are already planning to make. They must make the person that they hate a boogeyman. It will become anti-Western again if the West's hand is seen to be meddling. And there are already indications of that. Look at the Brit British having sent an SAS team and uh, MI6 agents into Libya. What the CIA does is go into a country and move among the people 
that are dissatisfied to stimulate a revolt against a leader that they don't like because they want regime change. Has Gaddafi used the oil money to build Libya? Yes. Did Gaddafi use oil money and discover water under the Sahara Desert and brought that water to the surface and brought water from Benghazi all the way uh, to the border almost of Tunisia? Did he impose farming in the desert so that they could feed their own people? Yes. Are there billions of dollars that he's spending building homes, building apartments for his people? Yes. So something is under this. And so when America, England, France, three imperialist powers want to destabilize that country is it that you so concerned this man has been investing in African development this man has been moving throughout Africa this man has friends all over the world he may not be your friend but if you take him out and kill him like he's some rotten fella that wants to kill his own people what did you do in Waco what did you do when your people rose up? Did you talk them out of it? No, they had weapons, you bombed them. What did you do in Philadelphia with the MOVE movement? Did you talk them out of their home or did you bomb them? He said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense's office today, and he said, this is a memo that describes how we're gonna take out seven countries in five years starting with iraq and then syria lebanon libya somalia sudan and finishing off iran dom has perfected the game of cheat and retreat and is very skilled in the art of denial and deception this is a regime that has already used poison gas to murder thousands of its own citizens on saddam hussein's orders this is a man who has attacked his neighbors twice, who uh, represses his own people. He used uh, chemical weapons both against the Kurds and against the Iranians during the 1980s. Who is continuing to develop weapons of mass destruction. He's launched ballistic missiles against four of his neighbors over the years. Who's tried to assassinate a former American president. This is a man of uh, great evil. Saddam Hussein is a homicidal dictator who is addicted to weapons of mass destruction. Intelligence sources indicate that Saddam Hussein has ordered that scientists who cooperate with UN inspectors in disarming Iraq will be killed along with their families.